It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Today, I'm gonna respond to a YouTuber named Gothix. Now, Gothix is a YouTuber that mostly concentrate on videos talking about the culture war. And so, if you guys have not seen her channel, I personally recommend her channel for everybody to see. That way you guys can have some more entertaining content on your feed. Now, the main reason why I'm responding to Gothix is largely because she posted something on Twitter that I highly disagree with. Now, my criticism on the tweet is not necessarily an attack on the creator because I have nothing against Gothix as a person. But rather, I'm trying to criticize the ideas that she actually espoused in the tweet. And so without further hesitation, let's respond to the tweet. She says right here, whether people want to admit it or not, the atheistic worldview opened an opportunity for shootings, gang violence, genocide, and other atrocities for two reasons. Number one, they don't believe or don't care about accountability after death. And number two, they convince themselves that human beings, including the government, have the authority and wisdom to create their own moral standards. First and foremost, let's first define the terms, that way everybody's on page. Let's first define atheist, and let's define worldview. The definition of an atheist is a person who disbelieves or lack beliefs in the existence of gods or gods. A worldview is a particular philosophy of life or the conception of the world. The tree starts off with a straw man, largely because it assumes that there's like a singular atheistic worldview, when in reality there are like many types of worldviews that a person can be an atheist and have a worldview. Let's take for example the case of naturalism. It's entirely possible for a person to be an atheist and a naturalist or the ideas of materialism, it's entirely possible for a person to be an atheist and materialist, or the ideas of secular humanism, it's entirely possible to be an atheist and a secular humanist, and so the philosophies themselves that a person subscribes to is actually different depending from atheist to atheist, and so there's not a single worldview because the ideas often conflict with each other. Now, she continues to say that it leads to shootings, gang violence, genocide, and other atrocities. I'm not sure if she actually heard about the ideas of secular humanism, but here are the ideas for secular humanism for those who have no idea. The philosophy of secular humanism includes the need to test belief, a conviction that dogmas, ideologies, and tradition, whether religious, political, or social, must be weighed and tested by individual and not applied by faith, reason, evidence, and a scientific method, fulfillment, growth, and creativity, search for truth, this life in comparison to the afterlife, at this as well as justice and fairness and building a better world. Now, she said earlier in the tweet that atheists don't have accountability in the afterlife. Now, this actually fully addressed this issue for secular humanism, it says right here, a concern for this life as an opposed to the afterlife, and a commitment to making it meaningful through better understanding of ourselves, our history, our intellectual and artistic achievements, and the overlooks of those who differ from us. In other words, underneath the ideas of secular humanism, it would not actually allow for genocide, it would not allow for killing, it would not allow for rape, or any other disgusting action that she actually takes. In other words, secular humanism operates on the principles of utilitarianism, and utilitarianism is a theory of morality that advocates for action that foster happiness or pleasure and oppose action that cause unhappiness or harm. If we look at the European continent, by far they're mostly non-religious. That includes, of course, Great Britain as well as Spain, Portugal, France, as well as Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, and the rest of the northern countries. Meanwhile, the other countries, they tend to be much more religious in comparison to the northern countries. There's an article that was done by Psychology Today, and it shows that secular societies fare better in comparison to religious ones. 
It says right here, the latest report that's been put out by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development have stated that there are 10 states that are listed for the best and worst quality of life. According to this multi-variable analysis, which took into account the plethora of indicators of social well-being, those states in America with the worst quality of life tend to be among the most God-loving, most religious states, such as Mississippi and Alabama, while those states have the best quality of life tend to be the least God-loving and least religious states, such as Vermont and New Hampshire. It continues right here that the secular states tend to fade better more than the religious on a variety of measurements, including homicide, violent crime, poverty rates, obesity, diabetes, child abuse rates, educational attachment levels, income levels, unemployment rates, rates of sexual transmitted diseases, and teen pregnancies, etc. It continued to say that the European countries like Japan, Australia, the Netherlands, Great Britain, Scandinavia, they tend to fade better on every indicator imaginable in comparison to places like Colombia, Jamaica, El Salvador, Yemen, Pakistan, the Philippines, etc. So not only is Gothis wrong on the issue that there is no such standard for which atheists can say something is right and wrong, and that there is no such atheistic philosophy that actually teaches that, but she's also wrong that godlessness actually leads to the ills of the world, to genocide, to these all kind of different ideas that she's talking about. If that was really the case, then why is it that the most secular nations among us actually fade better in comparison to the religious societies? I want to further emphasize, a lot of these European countries don't actually have any type of mass shootings. Not only that, but not any sort of occurrences whatsoever about any sort of school shootings. You simply cannot put the blame on godless societies on the main reason why something bad actually happens. You need to take into consideration many kind of variables on why something actually happened. Could it be like the mental health crisis in our America? Could it be like a number of different factors on why things happen because in America? Because America is the most religious society out there. Like 60% of the population is like Christian, right? In comparison to 30% of those who are not religious. And so it's not necessarily because of godlessness, that's why our society is actually going down. It's largely because of a cultural phenomenon that we actually have to actually have this sort of stuff happen every single time. She continues to say in the video that she knows that murder is wrong because God said that murder is wrong. This right here is something that is known as divine commands theory. In other words, whatever what God said is right is right, and whatever what God said is wrong is wrong, and therefore the God of the Bible is the objective moral standard for which Christians actually follow. Now, the whole entire issue with this case of divine command theory is that anything that's actually bad and causes actual harm can actually be good based upon the standard of that God. If God one day says that murder is actually right, then by that objective standard, murder is actually right because the God actually says so, or something like rape, if he actually says that rape is actually right, it is right because the God says so. So where exactly are we getting our standard for morality that's not necessarily supernatural? Earlier in the video, I talked about utilitarianism and the ideas of wanting harm reduction. Now, the objective standard for which we can actually judge what is actually right and what is actually wrong is largely through our empathy. Because humans are actually biologically evolved to the idea of putting yourself in other people's shoes. And because humans have the capability of putting other people's into other people's shoes, that's why we kind of determine the harm reduction about what is right and what exactly is wrong. Because humans have the capability of putting themselves in other people's shoes, that's why we have the standards to what we have right now. Because most people would not want somebody in their family or themselves to actually get hurt, and that's why we have laws against murder. That's why we have laws against stealing. That's why we have laws against other kind of harmful acts, largely based upon the principles of utilitarianism and on the principles of our empathy. And that's why we make these sort of moral standards about what is actually right and what is actually wrong. 
So when she says things like there is no such thing as an objective standard for atheists to say right for wrong, it's absolute bullshit, complete utter bullshit. There are also atheist philosophers that also argue for the idea of objective morality. If you want some more details, I recommend a book that's actually called The Moral Landscape by Sam Harris. So not only is she wrong when she says that there is no such moral standard for atheists, but she's also wrong with saying that there's an atheist worldview when there are many kind of conflicting worldviews, even among atheists. But uh, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section section down below, and I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler